welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going over how I made this sort of galaxy-esque, aurora borealis type fox creature, whatever you really want to call it. The first step I always like to do is to sculpt the head and feet. I do this with Super Sculpey, but any polymer clay that you prefer will work just fine. I start off with a lump of tin foil that I've squished into the general shape that I want and start wrapping clay around that. I do this for a few reasons, one of them being that it saves you clay, the second being that the clay head won't be as heavy when attaching it to the armature so it's less likely that it'll tip over, and thirdly that it'll bake more evenly in the oven since it'll be around the same thickness and not as thick if it had been just all clay rather than tin foil. Once I sort of have the general shape I'm going for in the clay, I like to start working on the eyes. I puncture two holes into the clay where the eyes will go and then make two little balls the exact same size and set them inside. eyelids I take two little pieces of clay and roll them out into very long logs or as it's also called little snakes and then I wrap them around the eyes and just start adjusting them until I get the expression that I'm looking for. You can really play around with this type of thing. You can make angry expressions, sad expressions, happy expressions. It's just you have to be patient with this kind of thing and work with it over and over again until you get the look that you want and make sure that both eyes are even. It helps to look at all angles, top, bottom, left, right, to make sure that one eye isn't like janky compared to the other one. honest at first I didn't really like the sculpture I ended up with I just thought it looked a little weird and a little derpy if I'm gonna be honest but when I feel like that the best thing that I can do is to just pause the sculpture and just leave it alone for a while because that way I'm not looking at it constantly and when I come back to it usually I notice things that oh I should probably fix this or oh this looks a little weird and even sometimes I'll end up, I'm like, oh, well, that sculpture is actually not that bad. I think I was just looking at it for too long and I got irritated with it. So it's good to take breaks rather than to just go for it all in one go, because especially if you're upset with it, it's not going to help you at all if you're just forcing yourself to go along with it when you don't like it. So take breaks. After the sculpture is all said and done, I bake it in the oven at 270 degrees Fahrenheit for roughly 30 to 45 minutes. Once the clay pieces are attached to the armature, the next step is to build up the body. I use quilt batting for this step and it usually comes in giant long sheets and I just cut it into strips and slowly wrap it around the wire over and over until I get the body that I'm looking for. I typically like to do the neck and torso first and then once I've built that up a little bit I start to work on the front legs and then the back legs 
And then I just go back over everything to make sure it's all seamless together and it flows nicely from one leg to the other and from the leg to the neck, etc, etc. Once the body is completed, it's time to cut out the pattern for the fabric. I place the doll on the fabric, stomach side up, and cut the entire length of the doll. I then cut slits so that the legs will slide through, push them through, and then trim the edges down until the fabric fits nice and snug around the body. Once I do that, I sew straight down the middle using a basic stitch. For the legs, it's a similar process. I cut the entire length of the leg, and then I sew feet first up towards the body, and to join the two fabrics together, I use a ladder stitch. Once all that sewing is done, which oh, I'll be honest, I cannot stand that part, it's time to trim the body. I use a pet shaver for this step because it's just way faster than if I was just trying to do all this with scissors, especially since I tend to make my sculptures on the larger side. It also makes everything much more smoother rather than jagged, again, if you were just using scissors. However, even though the pet shaver is great, I do like to go back in with scissors, especially around the legs, just to detail everything and to get anything that the trimmer could not get.
once all the trimming is done, it's time to add all those colors. I use a dual action siphon fee to airbrush for this step. I like to spray on white first since because the fur is black, if I was to just go ahead and spray blue right off the bat, it wouldn't show very well. So I like to spray it white first so that the colors will actually show and actually pop against the dark fur. Now as long as you comb out the fur after each layer of paint, the fur will not get sticky or stiff. After all the airbrushing and final paint touch-ups are done, the sculpture is complete. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. I know my videos tend to be really lengthy and I appreciate that you guys keep coming back and watching them. Before the video is over, I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons on my Patreon page. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's a site where you can pledge a certain amount to support artists like me and you get perks and exclusives in return. I already have a few exclusive videos and tutorials on there that you won't find anywhere else. I'll leave a link in the description below if any of you guys are interested in checking it out. Also, I'm just about done making my FAQ video for all of you guys, so if you guys have any last minute questions, please leave them in a comment down below. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching this, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!